So Trump is managing to, to finally make good on some campaign promises in a really substantive way. First taking on the Iran deal, but now on the immigration front from Daily Mail, we see nearly 60,000 Hondurans are told to leave or be deported after 19 years in the United States as Trump administration ends the protection scheme for the country. It's a scheme now, see? Oh, the authoritarianism baked into this. I, I didn't even see it when I first read this headline, but protection scheme. It's a scheme to allow you to enjoy freedom of movement on planet Earth, to decide where you're going to live and travel to. It is, it is a scheme to give you shelter when your country has been uh, through some particular challenges, namely Hurricane Mitch in 1998, which was the uh, precipitation of all of this. 60,000 people have been in the U.S. since then. The hurricane that caused more than 11,000 deaths and $5 billion in damages. It's now 57,000 enduring citizens will need to uh, leave by January 1st, 2020 or be deported. Now, the funny thing about this is that as, as substantive as this is, as, as much as this might be like, you know, the most substantive thing that Trump has done to address the issue of, uh, you know, illegal Mexicans in America is not even going to really take effect until less than a month before he leaves office. So if you're a Honduran here, you're going to now, this is, uh, I, I think Trump just secured 57,000 volunteers for whoever the Democratic nominee for president is. Hopefully they can see the light and volunteer for the libertarian nominee for president instead. But Donald Trump didn't seem to think this out very well in terms of the timing of the political strategy for, for his reelection efforts. If he is going to be reelected in 2020 there, and, and, and he has made these kinds of uh, enemies within the United States, they are going to be coming out for anybody who's going to allow them to stay here. Although going back to what this deal is about, it is kind of, it's kind of schemey. Tens of thousands of Honduran citizens who have been living in the United States since 1998 have been told to leave or be deported because of their temporary protected status being revoked. A recent decision to end the availability of the TPS for Hondurans by the Trump administration means the group will need to begin heading home to Honduras and be out of the U.S. by January 1, 2020. The decision was made in spite of Honduran officials, human rights groups, and Democratic congressmen and women all fighting for protections to be extended. Now, the funny thing is they're fighting for, like, these special protections as opposed to just being able to say, hey, freedom of movement, hey, freedom to live wherever you want. But I don't have a problem with, you know, liberals using the strategy that chips away at government power by whatever excuse they're using. But the idea that Honduras is still in a state of emergency or that they can't return now 20 years later, yeah, that's kind of silly. Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen released a statement on Friday explaining, because the TPS was put in place because of Hurricane Mitch, which devastated the nation in 1998, circumstances regarding the hurricane were all that were examined in the decision. Because conditions in Honduras that resulted from the hurricane have notably improved. This is the quote. Additionally, since the last review of the country's conditions in October 2016, Honduras has made substantial progress in post-hurricane recovery and reconstruction from the 1998 Hurricane Mitch. Some Hondurans may be eligible for an alternative lawful immigration status or other protections under the U.S. immigration system, the statement claimed. A time period of 18 months for the 57,000 people who re-registered after the last extension of the TPS is also intended to help Hondurans prepare for the massive group of people who will need to return home. For current Honduran TPS holders to remain in the U.S. and work until the scheme runs out in 2020, they will need to re-register and apply for work authorization, which costs nearly $500. President Juan Orlando Hernandez's government expressed regret at the forced removal of Hondurans from the United States. The Foreign Relations Ministry said in a statement, it is a matter for Washington to decide, but added that we deeply lamented. It said returnees are and always will be welcome in their homeland where they will be received with open arms and their reintegration into our society will be facilitated. I think this is still primarily a distraction issue. 
the idea that government can effectively restrict the f freedom of movement of people on a larger scale is just kind of silly. I mean, you look at the the reality today: thirteen million, whatever. So I don't I don't know what the current numbers are. You know, illegal immigrants, aliens living in the United States. For all the government's policy in the past, geez, it failed 13 million times. I think the reason that immigration is such a big issue, not just because of Donald Trump, but, but even globally right now with the European migrant crisis, is that it reinforces tribalism. It's a distraction issue that gets you to identify more as a victim of a particular government racket, as a citizen of a specific country, rather than as a human being, as a, as a citizen of the world, as part of a global family of humanity. And the deportation of, of 50,000 Hondurans from the United States just shows that the United States federal government is, is willing to just uproot people after living somewhere for 20 years in order to stoke division and fear and resentment. And of course, most importantly, to keep you a subservient, submissive citizen, the divide and conquer value of this issue. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.